The next song we're gonna sing, I know you already see the title on the thing. Hold on. So I ask you all to move to the edge of your seats. Come on now, I don't see anything moving. <laughs> this is your encouragement, edge of your seats. When we do the spring up well well part, you're gonna raise your arms like this, those that are able, or just stand up and you're gonna do gush, 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 gush. Do you need a practice round? Those at home, you can do this too, it's your exercise in the morning. So we're gonna stand up and go gush, 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 gush. Well, again, you see on your papers and all that stuff, it says 12, but we're going to go to 13 for the book of Matthew, chapter 13. And as you get there, we're just going to read verses 33 to 35. And as you get there, would you please stand with me as we read God's word. Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse 33. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parable. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So it was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet, I will open my mouth in parable. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for your word. And that word, we pray that you will make it alive to us this morning, which you always do if we allow you, that it is spoken, that you will reveal hidden things to us, Lord God. Uh, you'll bring them to light in our lives, new truths, new understandings, Father, of our walk with you, to draw us closer to you, and to equip us and encourage us to follow you. And you know where we're at in our journey, Lord. Thank you for meeting us here and where you're going to take us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Bless you. Here we have Jesus going back to Galilee, and he takes everyday life and illustrates the kingdom of God. Now, it's interesting, smaller towns, they, their villages, they didn't have bakers, and so women made their own bread at home, and a lot of times they did it anyway. And, and Jesus, no doubt, often thinks of his mom. Mary making bread and understand taking a, the, the, the fermented, the, the one loaf of another baking and taking it off and fermenting it and letting it rise. And when the leaven was mixed into the new batch of dough, it changed the characteristics of the dough. That is, the dough rose and made full loaves of bread when baked. 
So Jesus observed that just as leaven changed the dough in which it is mixed, God's kingdom likewise changes everything with which it comes into contact. So as we think about that this morning, this passage, there is some controversial, it's a a little difficult to interpret uh, the difficulties of it. Um, because see, often leaven is symbolized uh, in the in the Jewish people as an evil influence. In fact, every there's elsewhere in the New Testament uh, that Jesus advises his disciples to to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. Over in Mark chapter eight, Paul twice uses the phrase "a little leaven leavens the whole loaf, the whole lot." The whole lot, as he exhorts the Christian people to separate themselves from all things that can in any way influence for evil. Over in 1 Corinthians 5 and Galatians 5. So, and if a Jewish proselyte, in other words, someone who came into Judaism and uh, started in Judaism, relapsed into his pagan ways, the rabbis spoke of it as having returning to his leaven. So there again, we have leaven is used as uh, evil or bad. But here, uh, we will show here that this is not the case here. This is another direction of Jesus using everyday things to look at good influences. Because what we have to do is we have to think about taking a long look at things. Because a lot of times as Christians, we today, we need success immediately. Sometimes you hear talk about we're like a, a, a microwave generation. They just put in, beep, done, man, we're ready to go. I don't want to wait for anything. I don't want to have to, you know, wait for my reward. And some people believe that Christianity means that all our problems are immediately solved and prosperity will come by tomorrow afternoon. That's not true. A lot of you are going, no way, I don't know what Christianity you're talking about, but it's out there. That prosperity, there's some things out there, oh, all your troubles should go away, and, you know, if you have enough faith and all that, that's not what my Bible tells me. And I haven't lived it, and I know any of us that really honestly lived that. Because, see, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, the guilt of sin is dealt with on basis of Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection, his resurrection from the dead. So this should bring immediately, this brings immediate peace with God, right? When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you have immediate peace with God. Because before that, you have no peace with God. And so as we have immediate peace with God, because we know that we will and we shall not come into condemnation. Because in Christ Jesus, there is no, you're not, you, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus that our sins are under the blood of Christ, that we can be convicted because of our sinful behavior and as our change, but you're not condemned. Personal problems, however, still must be dealt with on a day-to-day basis. So the glorious truth, however, is that it is, it is that ultimately we do have assurance of victory. But, I mean, daily life or things got to be... But long-term, looking out there, there is victory. Knowing that we're going to win the game provides help in times of need. And it strengthens us. If we're going with the game motif, it strengthens us for every inning. Right? The game's won in Christ Jesus. But we got to play the game. we got to keep playing every inning. And through, that, through every inning, the long look of understanding that we win, or I win, you win, the game, the long run, to understand, though, that that will help me hold on. And so the Bible, the, John wrote to a struggling church in Asia Minor that the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tri- tried, and you shall have tribulation these ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. God saying he's going to give you a crown. We be faithful through it all, through the temptation, through the through the tribulation. John was trying to say, just say, take a long look. Look at things out there farther instead of just snapshots for today. 
Don't just set your eyes on short-term goals. Because sometimes we look short-term, we're like, oh, man, this is just terrible. What's going to happen is this doesn't work out. We got to look long-term beyond that. You have short-term goals. I'm not saying, okay, I'm not going to worry about it. But you have to put yourself in the short-term goal and the long-term goal that your eyes are, don't get stuck on circumstances, but they look on the long-term, long-term thing of what God is doing in our lives. It means be faithful and live up to the light you possess. Again, this is coming back to the leaven, and we're going to work on that. Uh, no pun intended. But you have, we're going to work on the leaven to, in our lives. What kind of leaven are we putting in? Because think about this. History renders strange verdicts. And I say this because if you have been born alive, you've been born alive. I guess you would have been born alive. But you would have been, a born, have been alive in 1809. You would have been tempted to join a group of people who said this is the darkest and the blackest year. The world's blackest year. It was a bad time back then. I didn't do a lot of research on it. I just took the, the writers for what they were saying. And, uh, but everything seemed to indicate, and this was a time that the, the world had no future. Europe was uh, on the borderline of complete frustration, ready to throw in the towel because Napoleon, he was uh, dominating the entire continent and making plans for further conquests. And the cause for freedom and social progress seemed hopeless. The truth is, though, however, God was at work. God's always working in the midst of all this. In that year, Abraham Lincoln, William Gladstone, and Oliver Wendell Holmes were born. So we're thinking, bad, look, this is terrible. Oh, man, nothing's going to happen. And here comes Abraham Lincoln was born that year. And look what he did. Oliver Wendell Holmes, and, and, and I'm not sure about William Gladstone. I'll admit on that one. I wrote that one down, didn't know about that. So, but these famous men were born on that year. And so as Christians, we can put our faith in the fact that history will vindicate our trust in Christ. You believe that? Polycarp, a Christian martyr, was put to death by the middle of the second century. And a group of struggling Christians were terrified by the, the, the persecution under the proconsulship of a man named uh, Stadius uh, Q. He got a big, long last name. But anyway, the historians who wrote and they recorded the death of Polycarp, he concentrated some great truth into a few words when he wrote of the event and attached a date to it, he penned Stadius Q, the proconsul, Jesus Christ, King forever. The possibility had a, have known that nearly 19 years later, people would still be reading his words. Who was, who was Stadius Q? Who knows? In fact, really, who cares, right? Unless you're a real history buff and... But above all that turmoil in the world and the chaos and the condition that exists now that we have and exists through the centuries, this affirmation that he wrote way back then stands that Jesus Christ came forever. So God's always there. So if one was to ask, is the chief appeal of the gospel, it's many people. In so many generations, how, what would you say? And it, is it not the influence of the person or Jesus as a person? Others have come and gone. Military men have conquered large, large portions of the world, but they end up having to give it back. Merchants have cornered the market on certain products, but they could not hold out forever. Entertainers have become a household word. Household names would have perished. Some, tragically. Jesus Christ, however, amen. This strong story is stronger today than he was in the first century. His kingdom is greater and, and more people claim allegiance to him than ever before in the history of the world. 
And I spoke of Napoleon earlier. Napoleon, he's reported to write that once he said, Caesar, Charlemagne, and I built kingdoms on force, and they had crumbled. Jesus Christ built a kingdom on love, and today there are countless thousands who would gladly die for his sake. So as I say this and speak of these things and looking at this and, and this passage, there's a lot of forces out there that work for God, that are worth working for God that we least expect. It was interesting that in celebration of the 100th anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's birth, a cartoonist drew a picture of two men talking in a rural area, a section of Kentucky. And the one man said, what's new? And the other guy replied, nothing. This is an out of a way, an out of a place, an out of a way place. Oh, by the way, there was a newborn boy born over by Tom, over at Tom Lincoln's place last night. But nothing new ever happens around here. And I say that, that there's some leaven put in there. But to think about, as, as the scripture talks about the leaven, and this woman put leaven in the bread, and the bread grew, and it changed, as I said in my introduction, it changed the characteristic of the loaf. And the other parts of scripture talk about leaven where be fearful of, stay away from the leaven of the Pharisees and inherit and others that do not glorify God. We got a lot of things in our culture, in our grounds, and around us that are breathing and hollering about putting leaven in our lives that change our characteristics that are not godly. Jesus is using this parable to remind us that the leaven that we put into our lives, what are the influences that influence us to change our character, to change our lives? Are they of the world or are they of the word? Just a little bit. Ladies and others who cook, you know, you know more about this than I do. Okay, so I'm not even going to start to say, oh, you put this amount of munch in for that much? No way. I'm not going there because I'm wrong. So you know how much it just takes a little bit, right, of, of yeast to put into that bread and to mix it all up and... It just grows. I mean, now you can put too much in, right? I guess I best they could go. But, but it's interesting that when she, when this was done, until it worked all through the dough, and it was fulfilled, that it came out, that, that she had this dough and, and it mixed into the large amount of flour until it worked all the way through. And he spoke these things in parable. And to understand that, what comes into our, again, it's, it's, it's not real hard. It's what are you putting into your life to make your character? What is your character coming from? Is people see that your character is more from the world or is it more from the word? Is it something that we're able to, that we speak into us, that it takes time to put a little bit of Jesus goes a long way. A little bit of the word could go a long way in our lives. A little bit of prayer can go a long way. In your day. I wonder if somewhere, now we know the birth, we know the Jesus story, the birth story, the narrative of Jesus. But what happened if one day, that night, because the scripture says about, you know, what happened that night and all those different things when Jesus was born. And, but what, do you think maybe somewhere in Jerusalem or, or around that area or, you know, maybe that night, that night that they were hanging out and someone was saying, you know, this is a small town, ain't nothing going on here. And someone came up and said, hey, you know, by the way, you know, some, some girl just gave birth to a baby over in a, in a stable over there. Yeah, nothing very big happens around here, huh? Just that little bit of Jesus. You don't think much happens around you, maybe. No, you don't think, hey, you think, eh, my life isn't very exciting. You know, we don't do a whole lot, or, you know, things aren't, what you know, 
not not you want them to be, but maybe you're going through a season of your struggling, and you're thinking not much going on, or where's God? Well, I think in this passage here, Jesus is trying to tell, just saying, he's there. He's there. Just a little bit of him. If you take a little bit of him and you hang on to that faith, you take a hold of what he's done, does that not help you? Have you ever thought about taking some time and going, you know, because sometimes you get caught up in life and it goes so fast, and we end up going and going and going and going, and like, man, where's God? I ain't doing much. And all of a sudden, we think about, we just take some slow down and go, you know, I haven't been doing my Bible reading, or I haven't been doing some things much, but I remember when. Or, or you just got that one verse that day, and it just affected your whole day. Or you went home that night, and before you went to bed, you laid your head on the pillow, or before you put your head in the pillow, you read some scripture, you just put things in perspective. Maybe you just said a prayer for somebody. You just keep on praying for somebody just a little bit. I'm not doing much. I don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't know how, what to do for God, but you're praying for somebody. You're lifting someone up. You said hello to somebody. Just that little bit of leaven in you, a little bit of Jesus, that little bit of a spirit in you that you don't normally do, but you do it. It affects you. It affects the life, the world around us. So the whole thing is coming down to this. The leaven in our lives. What are we putting in? What are we putting into our lives? Because God's out there. He's on the field, even when he seems invisible. We need to trust him, receiving what he has for us. Going back and receiving that that forgiveness of, of what he did at the cross, remembering that. Remembering that he died on the cross for your sins, just for you. And he takes your issues, and he wants to hold on to them, and he wants to get rid of them. He wants your sins to be forgiven, and for him to put his spirit in place of those style lifestyles. Again, take, take us as a lump, a loaf, and, and we can't. You can't, once you put leaven in to something, you can't take it out, right? Physically, you can't. If you put yeast in something, you can't put it. Oh, I can't. You can't take it out. It's mixed up in there. And sometimes we think our lives like that, especially if we're going down the, the wrong road or we're doing something. We're like, how do I change? I can't change. I'm just all mixed up in this. It's all in me. You ever hear, I, I've probably done this when I was before I got saved, but it's just who I am. I'm telling you, it's just who I am. The way God made me. But if it's sinful and it's not right, not giving God the glory, then it is in you, but God can take it out of you. God's the only one can take the leaven out, the evil, that messed up stuff out of us and put his leaven in, put his yeast in to change our characteristics and our lives. It comes down to, will we let him? And as we let him, do we allow, we, others will see that there's different stuff in us. Our characteristics and our character is changing. Now, he'll use your personality. He'll use who you are and and those things that you have. But it'll change you because you'll start seeing Jesus. It'll be a different way. And we all do that. And so today, I don't know where you're at. But again, it's the opportunity to say, Jesus, here I am. You know, there's some leaven in me that, eh, it's just... It's part of my character, and I can't change it. We have to ask him. And today might be that day. God, you know that issue that I've been having. Could you help get that leaven out and put more of you in? And that is ask for forgiveness, ask to change, and when that changes, then you have to put him in. You got to look in the Word. You got to start doing some praying and reading the Word and and asking someone to, to help you maybe walk that walk. But that change will come as you allow him to come in. Believe what you read. Believe those different things. And see how he will change your character. So I pray that for you this morning. And as we close in song, allow the Holy Spirit to speak and understand that, again, God, I want to put the good leaven in. I want to put your good yeast in. I want to put you in me, the Spirit in me, and help get rid of the other stuff that doesn't help my character be the character you want to be.
And you all can be characters, amen? I know you're characters, but you want to be the Jesus character. Serve a living Savior. God's Word's alive. He's alive. His Spirit's alive. We can be alive in Him. We allow Him to change us. So, Lord, let's go forth then, knowing that you are part of God's family. We're going to go forth proclaiming the praises of God. Go forth in the assurance that Christ is always with us. And go forth to bring the kingdom of God wherever we are. Amen.